This is the Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. It's time for Overrated, Underrated with Ryder and Lisa. All right, I'm going to go with underrated, being good at taking days off. (laughs) Yeah, we screwed up. We are not good at it. Why are we here? Exactly. Is anybody listening? I don't think so. Well... Uh, there are people who yeah. are still working. Today's the last day before the long weekend. It would be smart to take this week off, though, when there is a long weekend. Mm-hmm. So we had Thursday, Friday off last week, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week. And then some for some reason, we're working today, and then we go into the long weekend and have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. We could have, with the price of five work days burnt for vacation... Had 11 days off in a row. Instead, we have like this weird eight days off work day or seven days off work day and then three more days off. And you know what's annoying? Outside of doing the show, we get asked to do other things behind the scenes and stuff. Like I know they're going to hand me a stack of commercials to read Mm -hmm. as soon as we're done the show today. Busy day. Busy day. We're going to push it all back. Why are we here, man? I like, I'll look at the calendar at the start of the year and be like, ooh, that's a smart three days to take off there. Or like, yeah. oh, Christmas is great this year. I got to take off before and after. But for some reason, I just, I miss this one. You miss this one. And here we are at work. Just this one day. <laughs> just absolutely wrecking our sleeping patterns <laughs> from the last week. And then we're back to sleeping in again tomorrow. But... To a lot of people listening right now, they have been working all week. Today Mm -hmm. is their Friday, so we have to be in a good mood. Yes, we're exhausted. We're not used to waking up this early. Yeah, I know. We got to bring it. We got to bring it. We got to bring it. We got to play good music. Oh, because we have a podcast, too, that is just uh, some of our favorite moments from the show. That would be so random for those listeners, too, to be like, why is there a random podcast? There's one day. One show. So we got to make it count. We need your help with uh, solving a bit of an argument that we had over. The last week while on vacation, we were uh, driving down an old Saskatchewan road and the vehicle in front of us clipped a gopher. Common occurrence on Saskatchewan highways. We on Alberta highways too a bit, but. I can't imagine that adrenaline rush for a gopher being like, should I go? Now should I go? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to go. And And if they get by, oh yeah, this guy didn't didn't make it. So he's flopping around on the road a bit. No, he wasn't. Yeah, he was. He was dead. He was doing the twitch. I I saw it. That's why I did this. Maybe one last twitch. Okay, maybe it wasn't his last one. So I said vocally because I knew if I just did what I had planned to do without telling you what I was doing, that we would never talk again. But I just said, oh, I should put that gopher out of its misery because. It was twitching. Yeah. And so I drove over it, and you were so mad at me. Because I felt it. I felt it under my foot. It was under my foot. The tire was under my foot, and I felt it. So should I have... What should I have done? What should I have done in that situation so that Lisa didn't have a temper tantrum? Should I have left it? Should I have pulled over and parked and went up? Maybe you should have done it under your tire. I, I would have been in the ditch. If uh, we would have rolled the vehicle and died with the gopher. Maybe I should have left it. I should have left it. I should have left it. Okay. I don't think it was twitching. I think you enjoyed it because you're a Saskatchewan boy. No. And you like to shoot gophers. I would shoot gophers on our property to make sure that our other animals didn't break ankles. I almost called PETA immediately after to be like, I have to report... PETA would have said, thank you for your service, for Why? putting that poor animal out of its misery in case it was only severely injured. I saw if, even no, blood on it. Even if, okay, if anything, PETA would have said, thank you for your service because they dig little holes and then horses break their legs. And PETA is more prone to like... Probably like, they probably like horses more than gophers. I'm sure. So anyway, I would just like just, to know on the text line mm. what I should have done, or feel free to give us a call, instead of putting the gopher out of its misery so that Lisa had to feel it under the tire. It was right under my foot. I asked you half an hour later, are you okay yet? The worst part, when we parked, there was a full bird. In the grill. Dead. In the grill of the vehicle. I was like, I can't deal with this death around me. <laughs> 
You might have to never leave city limits again. I don't want to. Okay. Elle Magazine once again did uh, their song association game. So they get celebrities on. They're given a word. And then they have like five seconds to try to sing a song with that word in it. It seems easy. Yeah. But in the moment when you're the one. It's tricky. Yeah, it's tough. So uh, Noah Cyrus was the latest to be on. Do you want to hear some of it? Do you ever listen to Noah Cyrus sing? She's uh, so good. I've heard her sing before. I've never like, you know, dove into her discography before. But okay. She's got a great voice. Yeah. I know that. Mm-hmm. So here is uh, some of her playing the Song Association game. About. It's about damn time. In a minute, I'm Anita, sentimental, man and woman. To, hey, 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 that one. I just was taught that dance uh, earlier this morning. Good. Good. Good for you. You look happy and healthy. Not me. If you have a kid to ask, that one's a banger. Good for you, Olivia Rodrigo. I wish I could just like start singing a song and sound that good. I know. Because I'm like, it takes me half an hour to find the first note usually. It takes you like three karaoke attempts <laughs> in a bar <laughs> before people start paying attention to you yeah. and cheering. Uh, let's <laughs> do one more that she was asked here. Ever. Oh my god. Best song ever. <laughs> it was the best song ever. Maybe. I'm literally getting all of like, here's my number. So call me maybe. It's hard to look right at you, baby. So here's my number. And call me maybe. Uh, so are you ready to be put to the test? No, it's too early. I got my timer ready to go. <laughs> Let's do this. Jump. Jump, 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 jump around. <laughs> <laughs> What's that song? Jump around. Well, there's jump around. Yeah, but I don't know if they say jump, 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 jump around. What else but... would they say? Uh, well... That's what the song's called. <laughs> okay, next up. Friends. I've got friends Whoa. in low places. Well, Garth was just here. Good point. I didn't go, but everyone else in the world did. Car. You've got a fast car. I got a ticket anywhere. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll give you the ding on that. Sorry, wrong sound effect. Well done. <laughs> you were just expecting me to fail. I was. It's fine. You just hover over the the fail button. <laughs> I do. I, I do. <laughs> uh, gin. Sipping on gin and juice. Wow, that Snoop. was unreal. Oh, it was easy. Even though I've never had gin and juice. For how famous that song is, who has actually had gin and juice and what juice do you choose? Like, there's not enough information in the song for me to know what to order at the bar, Snoop. Is it? <laughs> what are we getting? Yeah, I, I have not found a gin uh, that goes with just a, a, what juice? a juice very well. You need some fizz in there. What are we using? We need more ingredients in the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we cleared that up. There is a position that may be opening up. City Council is highly considering it. That would have, a, like, the coolest name I've ever heard for a job title. You ready for this? Yeah. Nightmare. So Batman. Pretty much. The Nightmare would be on call for <laughs> any businesses that uh, run the majority of their business after 5 p.m. So, like, nightclubs, for example. They need cool. to get a hold of... Somebody from city council about something pressing. There would be a nightmare. And the slogan should be like, making sure the evening shifts aren't a nightmare. Ooh. Ooh. Like it. Yeah. Well, eh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we thought this uh, cool name for a job that actually doesn't sound that awesome. You'd be sitting around a lot, getting some paperwork done, waiting for a few calls you a week. Would, uh, you'd be dozing off. Yeah. So it's not that cool of a job, but the title sounds awesome. Okay, so maybe we have some listeners that have jobs that have really cool titles. Our reception desk, we call it the Director of First Impressions. And I love that title because mm-hmm. it's so true. It's the first person you see when you walk through the door. And Lauren's just the best, She's too. The best. So she owns that position very well. Uh-huh. Uh, Shelly hit us up on the text line and said, I mean, I'm a sandwich artist at Subway. Mm. I don't remember what they used to call us, but it wasn't that cool. Head of the art department here. I'm the only one in the art department. 
one of the texts we got. Uh, I sell chlorine at a pool and hot tub store, but they call me a chemical expert. A chemist. I think if you start calling a chemist, you would need to have some specific uh, post-secondary education. But to be a chemical expert, Same you're thing, clear. pretty much, you know. I worked on the highway one summer, and my job was the most boring job I had, but it paid great. I had to go out every hour. I had an alarm set in my vehicle. Go out every hour and just measure how far we've gotten along, like, on building the road. So you didn't actually do any building? Nothing. I pulled up, stopped, set the alarm for an hour, listened to the radio, smoked, and then beep, 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 I'd go out measure the 16 feet or whatever they had done that hour and then get back in the vehicle. That's it. So is that how you fell in love with radio? Or did you love it before that? Uh, no, I think it even would have been after that. The radio selection was pretty bad back then. I, then de- I dealt along? with it. Yeah, and that's, that's when I knew. It You're was, like, something needs to change here. That's why they needed me. They need a hero. But here's what they called me on the highway. The Ash Man. Because he smoked so much. No, I think it was the asphalt that we were working with. Oh. And so, like, go get the asphalt measurement guy, but they just changed it to Ash Man. <laughs> and I always loved that because I, I did smoke a lot just to embrace the cool nickname, the Ash Man. Ash Man. Joined by Daryl, you've got a cool job title name. Or have job, one. Job title. Yeah, yeah. So I, I used to work as an equipment operator for the city, and one of the jobs they had me doing, I used to run the chipper. The wood chipper. The wood mm-hmm. So I I wasn't certified to be an arborist to cut the wood. So I'd have to stand at the bottom of the tree and just wait for the, the branches to come down. Mm-hmm. And I'd organize them all, and then when he was done, then I'd throw them in the chipper. So I called myself the branch manager. The branch <laughs> manager. I like it. Not an arborist, but you're the branch <laughs> manager. That's even cooler. Well, also yeah, the so- fact that you were in charge of like the log, you could have went by Beaver Boy. <laughs> that that would have been a good title too. But, but I said it sounded a lot more important when somebody would ask you what you did for a living. I say oh, I'm a branch manager. Hilarious. I love that so much. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, man. Have Thank a great you. day. Uh, this says I'm a space occupier. So What's I, that mean? I texted back and said, what do you actually do? And they said, I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Space occupier. That is so <laughs> funny. Ken just wrote in saying, I'm a garbologist. I operate a garbage truck. <laughs> <laughs> April wrote in saying, my job was titled high pressure water distribution technician. Also known as a car washer. Car washer was going to be my guess, yeah. Okay, I used to uh, pump gas for a living when I was younger. Okay. And I used to, and I put on my resume that I used to call myself, instead of a gas jockey, I would call myself a petroleum transfer engineer. (laughs) Unreal. That's the best. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, bye. Cheers. Hey, good morning. What do you got for us? Good morning. I'm a massage therapist. Okay. So I would be like the bone crusher. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. The the well, the Cairo is more of the bone crusher, but I'm more of a muscle crusher, I guess. Right? Mm-hmm. Muscle, muscle, muscle crusher is pretty awesome. Knight of knots. What? The, oh, knight with a K. The knight of knots, because knots has a K as well, right? Got it. Yeah. What about naughty master? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good too. But I think people would go in with the wrong idea. With, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. My 10 year old daughter, Charlie, joins us after just wrapping up grade five. How was the school year? It was pretty good. You liked your teacher a lot this year, hey? Yeah. You want to give her a little shout out? I missed him. There you go. Uh, and you learned a lot of things. Was one of your favorite moments from grade five the, when restrictions were lifted and stuff and you got to go back to feeling like a normal kid again? Not really. Okay, well, well, what was a memorable moment from grade five? When the boys in my class and other classes were seeing who could stay in the porta potty the longest without throwing up. Oh, what a, okay, what a great sorry. memory. The, the <laughs> boys in your class uh, yes. and some of the other classes yes. were playing a game where they could see who could stay in the stinky porta potty the longest. Yes. Don't act like you were doing silly stuff like that in grade five. No, we didn't have. 
You guys probably in my throwing school. down stink bombs. We had to just take dumps on the lawn. No. Yeah. Yeah. I don't oh. think that's true. <laughs> I don't think we that's didn't, true we either, We didn't have Charlie. toilets We need a then. fact check. Uh, okay. Do you know who may have won this game? Is the winner actually the loser? Yeah. <laughs> no, the teacher shut it down before any of them could win. <laughs> what a dumb game. You know what? Young boys can be dumb sometimes. We do stupid things. Yep. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you. I'm happy you had a good grade five year. Enjoy your summer holidays, and then we'll crush grade six, right? Yep. It's uh, pretty wild. I'm just seeing on social media a lot where parents are posting their kids' first day of grade blank mm-hmm. versus the last day. You don't. I don't think people realize how much their kids sprout yeah. in one school year until you do a side-by-side of those photos. Well, it's just gone by so fast. I think any parents with, with really little ones... Should make sure that they take note of that. Although some of the days seem to drag out when you got sick kids or uh, when they're being noise machines. but Or if they woke up at 4.30 a.m. to come to work with you and then you're immediately going to play a round of golf with them after work. And they're going to have a then... meltdown after. No, yeah. not. Right when you get back to mom's house, that's when. Yeah. After... I'm, not, I'm not tired. I've already had two cups of hot chocolate. I'm fine. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. That crash is coming. <laughs> But it does go by too fast. Congratulations to any littles that got through another school year. Yeah. Uh, big ups to you for getting through these unprecedented times. The last couple years, uh, the kids had it, you know, pretty tough. And uh, along the way, I think they were all little champions for doing what they had well, to do with. Even Charlie being like, oh, yeah, like the masks thing isn't even a memory that is going to be yeah. the memory. It's the boys in the porta potty <laughs> smelling each other's dumps. <laughs> We are joined by David Hunter, the CEO and inventor of Karen Phytoplankton. Uh, Lisa and I have done the 30-day challenge with mm-hmm. Karen Phytoplankton and noticed some great health benefits, including just a really nice burst of energy. Is that something you guys normally see? Yeah, it's the number one review from, from people who take it that have never tried it before. They're like, a, wow, like I feel a lot brighter, you know, and it's just like, yeah, it's just nutrition. What a concept. What are some other benefits of Karen Phytoplankton? Skin issues, gut health, sleep, hair quality. You know, all this is related to nutrition. I think once people catch on and they understand it, I mean, it's going to transform healthcare. I know it is. And you guys aren't taking phytoplankton from the ocean. You're actually creating it? Yeah, no, actually, we're probably one of the only supplement companies around that, like, we actually grow the product that we're selling. So we're a complete from seed to stomach operation. Amazing. Well, we would highly recommend anybody give it a go. They can find it at select Costco's. Also, thekarenproject.ca. The Ryder and Lisa Replay. Brought to you by Action Furnace. Fixed right or it's free. Play 107.